Hi there, early in the year I obtained one of these, an Amiga 600. Now, I know what you're thinking, it's probably the most yellow A600 you've ever seen. I'll probably do a project to retrobrite it sometime, uh, but I'm quite happy with it because I got it for a very good price. Now, at the time when I purchased this, it wasn't working, hence the reason why I got it for a very good price. But, I sent it off to Amiga Kit for a recap, and now it's fully functional. But, to play WHD load games on it, you need a bit more RAM. Now, these come with 1 mega RAM as standard. There are a couple of upgrade options available, uh, but even with a additional one meg in it, you still need a bit more. Now, I came across a accelerator of the Furia, which seemed to be very good value for money, but there weren't many videos on it, so I thought I'd do an overview of the Furia accelerator, which I received earlier this week. Now, you can get the Furia from AmigaStore.eu. You can also get it from a chap called Lafrec. His real name is Shenazve Krevchek, I believe. Thank you very much to my friend Ursula for helping me pronounce that. But I do apologize to Lothrock if I've got it incorrect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbox this so you can have a look and we'll get it fitted into my A600. We'll boot it up and you can see how it runs. The ferry costs just a little bit under 100 pounds plus delivery. That's 100 Great British pounds. It's got a 68020 processor, that's the EC version, which is the same version as the Amiga 1200, but this one's clocked at 33 megahertz. Probably why it's got a heat sink on it, I'm not sure which of these heat sinks covers the CPU. It's also got a 40 megahertz FPU. You probably know that a lot of Amiga games won't actually take advantage of the FPU, but I thought it might be quite fun to do some ray tracing on it sometime. Also, you can actually get a cut down version of the Theory without an FPU, but for the little bit extra, I thought I might as well just get one with the FPU. It's got 9.5 mega RAM, which I'm assuming these are the RAM chips for. You can probably see it came really well packaged, so that's brilliant. Okay, what we've we got here. Aha. Right, okay, yes. I believe these are mounting screws which can hold it in place. Okay, so let's fit it into the A600. Okay, so this is my A600 open up. You can probably see I've got some nice stickers from Amiga Kit. I quite like these because it confirms that my A600 has been for a recap. It also confirms that they've done their checks. I've also got a 1 meg chip upgrade in there. Although the theory does come with 9.5 meg of RAM, you do need a bit more than 1 meg of chip RAM for some games to work in WHD load, and that's because the custom chips can only access the chip RAM. Okay, so um, I'm gonna fit this over the, the CPU here. Okay, so that, just, that should just slot in. Okay. There we go. Apparently it just clicks in place. Cool. That was quite easy. Ah, just, just give it a push. Ah, nice. Excellent. Okay, so no difficult doing that. I'm not sure if these stand things here are really necessary. I suppose it does give it a bit of a support if it's going to get moved around, but I don't think it's too important to have these little plastic stands here. Okay, so I'm just going to put my IDE card in there. I've installed a compact flash adapter here. Now you can probably see that the cable does make contact with that heatsink. I'm not sure if that's going to cause any problems, it probably won't. But what I'll do is I'll probably buy a compact flash adapter that is vertical. That way it doesn't make any contact and it's just going to be tidier. 
The compact flash card I prepped nearly in a week, so it should be good to go, fingers crossed. I'm actually quite impressed how easy it was to install. Now these are actually advertised as white on some websites, but does it really matter? I don't think so, because you're not going to see it anyway. Right, let's close this up, boot it up and have a play. I've had to come back to this about a week after I initially installed the Furia. That's because I did come across a couple of problems. The first problem was when I first booted up my Amiga, I got a black screen. That's apparently a very common issue that can occur. If you get a black screen, it's because the Furia isn't sitting properly over the CPU. What I had to do was give it a bit of a clean. Like you can see from this photograph I took, it is a little bit dirty, so I gave it a bit of a clean with IPA, waited for that to evaporate. I also had to just remove these plastic stands that I got with the Furia. It sits quite sturdy, so there's no issue there. These plastic legs were getting in the way of it making a proper connection. But the main reason why I had to wait a week was I put on order an SD card reader, like you can see here. Two reasons for that. The first reason is that it's just a bit tidier, so I no longer have the IDE cable going over the heatsink. It soaks out of the way. The other reason is that the theory is quite fussy about the compact flash cards that it uses. I was using a Transend, but I was getting all sorts of random behaviour. Sometimes it would boot, sometimes it wouldn't, things would stall. I was reading up on the forums and with Transend cards it's hit and miss. I did also try a non-branded compact flash card I had lying around, that was even worse. It wasn't recognised, so stay away from cheap compact flash cards. If you buy your Furia from AmigaStore.eu, you do have the option to buy a compatible compact flash card. They are SanDisk branded, so that probably hints that SanDisk are the most compatible brand. I used a 2GB SD card I had lying around, but I came across some issues with that as well. Um, I was getting all sorts of file system errors and if you're using quite a small card, less than eight gigabytes, you're supposed to leave a couple of megabytes towards the end of the partition. So when I did that, it booted up no problem at all. I just wanted to tell you guys about some of the issues I came across. Hopefully it will help somebody else. Right, I'm gonna close up the Amiga now, boot it up and we'll have a bit of a play. Okay, so here we have the A600 booted up. Here we have the two megs worth of chip RAM, or graphics memory, and a bit more than nine megs worth of fast RAM. The Fury does come with nine and a half megs worth of fast RAM, but some of it's going to be used when you boot up Workbench, certain items are put into your RAM disk. So let's run Sysinfo, which is what we always run when we're installing new accelerator, just to engage the performance. Let's run a speed test. Computing speed. Excellent, so we've got some pretty good numbers here. 6,575 dry stones. 12.42 times faster than a standard A600 from the looks of things. And 5.4 times faster than a standard A1200. So pretty good numbers there. So that's me there in the red, standard A600, standard 1200, it's pretty cool. Another cool tool you get with this is a tool called Furia Tune. You can download this from the net. Uh, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put it into your C folder, which is where your commands are. I downloaded it earlier on and I extracted it with LHA. Let's have a look, here we go. There's Fury Tune. So I copied that into my C folder in my system partition. So we would bring up a new shell.
and we do Furia to then question mark, we should get a list of commands we can run. And we do, so we can do things like turn the FPU on and off. Um, like you probably know, a lot of games don't use the FPU. Apparently some games don't run very well with the FPU on, so you can turn that off. You've got rap, map ROM function. I'm not quite sure what this add mem does. Adds an extra 1.5 mega RAM. And some other options. The other thing you can do is take away 4 meg of RAM from the accelerator card. Now you want to do that if you are going to be using anything in the PCMCIA slot on the side of your Amiga. Um, I do because I've got one of these. Now this is a compact flash card adapter. It just allows me to move files between my PC and my Amiga with ease. It saves me from opening up my A600 or even A1200 and taking the compact flash, putting it into the PC and moving files via WinUAE. And you do that by doing a control A and A, hold it for one, two, three. And that should Yes, that takes away four megs of RAM. It's got nothing to do with the accelerator being at fault. Apparently it's to do with the 68020EC, uh, which is the same version of the CPU in the A1200. The added RAM conflicts with the address space used by the PCMCIA slot, so you need to disable some of the RAM to, if you're gonna use it. Now. Let's have a look at some games. Well, a game, I suppose. Okay, let's see how Frontier Elite runs on this. Anybody with a stock A500, A600, or A1200 knows that this game is not the smoothest to run. Not on a stock unit, in a way. But the Furia doesn't seem to be having any, any problems with it at all. It's looking quite smooth. Nice. If you try to run this on a standard A500, A600, A1200, it's very stuttery. But this is quite smooth. I like it. I definitely think the Ferry is very good value for money because if you are looking for extra RAM, then you can get a PC MCIA memory slot. They normally go for about anything from 20 to 60 pounds on eBay. You can get some memory expansions, uh, they're probably about 60 to 80 pounds depending what you get because there are some older accelerator boards as well uh, like the Apollo range from the 1990s. You've also got the ACA 620 and the ACA 630 but they're quite hard to come by these days. I don't think Indivision computers are actually making them anymore. You have got some new RAM expansions for about 60 70 pounds, but for a little bit more money, I think it's definitely worth getting a theory because not only does it give you a bit more memory, it gives you a higher and faster processor, a bit more oomph, so you can run games like these, take full advantage of games like Frontier. Just bear in mind though, if you do get a theory. Uh, make sure that you get one with a SanDisk compact flash card or use a SD card because the theory is very very picky about the compact flash cards that it uses. Um, if you use a small SD card like I did, like a 2 meg or a 4 meg card, make sure that you leave a couple of megabytes towards the end of the last partition. That's the mistake I, I made. I, I tried to use the whole card and it couldn't read from it.
Yeah, so like you can see, front rear leak runs really smoothly on this, so definitely, it's definitely worth getting one of these, I think. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been useful, and see you soon.